More than 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and more than half of us can't even afford to pay for a $1,000 emergency without going into debt. So here's the ultimate five minutes guide to make sure you become rich and don't end up like the average American. Firstly, you need to know exactly what your financial situation is. Until we figure out how good or bad the situation is, we can't really make a plan or do anything to improve and achieve our goals. So grab a cup of coffee and start making the list of everything you own your house, your car, all the balances in your accounts, and also your retirement savings. Add all of them up as those are the assets you own. Now on the other side, we make the list of every dollar you owe to someone, from credit cards, student and car loans, to the money you owe to your family and friends, everything adds up to become your liabilities. Once you have both of these numbers, we can easily calculate your net worth by taking away your debts from your assets. In an ideal scenario, this should give you a positive number but if you have more debts and have a negative net worth, then don't worry at all. The whole point of doing this is to see how good or bad the situation is, and we can't fix anything till we know the problem, can we? So now that we have this snapshot of your current financial situation, we need to start making a budget. The word budget creates a lot of anxiety for people. It's not about restricting your lifestyle or cutting down on everything you enjoy. It's more about knowing where your money is going and being intentional and responsible with your finances. Every person does this a bit differently. You can write it down, do it on Excel, or use the budgeting apps. Do whatever works for you. So in order to make a budget first, pull up all the statements of all your bank accounts and credit cards for the last three months. Using them, you need to add up how much money you made every month and how much you spent every month. Once you add up your income and your expenses, have a look at how much money you have left over. If you don't have much left over, then we should focus on either increasing your income or reducing your expense. Reducing your expenses is a lot easier than just making more money. So have a look at the things you can cut out so that you have at least some money left over at the end of the month. If you are a numbers person like me, then you can even put the expenses into different groups. You can have groups for things like housing, utilities, food and eating out, debt payments, and so on. It makes it easier to keep track of the overwhelming amount of transactions. As you did your net worth test before, you now know how much money you have in your accounts. Any money you can access easily should be used as your starter emergency fund. People like Dave Ramsey say we should have a $1,000 in our starter emergency fund. I believe that one grand doesn't cut it anymore, and we should have at least one month of your expenses saved up. Your budget will tell you your average monthly expenses, and that's your goal for a one-month emergency fund. Use your leftover money from your budget and keep stacking it till you have this emergency fund. Stuff like not being able to get to work because the car broke down or having to see a doctor are emergencies which you can use this money for. Later on, if you think you have great job security, you can increase this to a three to six month emergency fund. But if you have a career where your pay fluctuates, you should aim for a 12 month emergency fund to make sure you have money if the next paycheck is a bit lower than what you imagined. Now we take all the money left in your budget and start paying off those debts you listed. There are two popular ways to pay off your debts the snowball method, and the avalanche method. In the snowball method, you pay off the smallest debt you have and keep moving up the list to the next bigger balance. This method might not give you the best interest savings, but it is psychologically beneficial as you see your debts going away from your life and this motivates you to stick to your plan. If you are very disciplined with your finances, you can also pay off your debts using the avalanche method, where you will pay off debts based on the interest rates. Start with the highest rate debt first and work your way down to the lowest rate debts. This method gives you the best interest savings, but it can be difficult to follow through for some people when the debts with the highest rates are also some of their biggest debts, and that can make it overwhelming. Next step is investing your money. After the debts are gone, you should have a lot more left over in your budget to start investing. On average, you should be investing at least 15 to 20% of your income. The median household income in 2022 was $74,580. So if you invest 15%, every year from age 25 to 65. Based on the average return of the S&P 500, you will end up with over $5.1 million. From this $5.1 million invested, you should be able to withdraw over $200,000 every year without running out of money. You can also figure out what the number is for you to retire and live off your investments. Simply take a look at your budget to calculate your annual expenses and then multiply that by 25. Having 25 years of your expenses invested will mean that you can withdraw 4% from your investments every year and never run out of money. I understand that everyone has a different financial situation, so let me know in the comments below if this helped you in any way or what things you do differently. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.